Yesterday was the anniversary of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s assassination, so C-SPAN took some callers to discuss MLK's legacy, and as you're about to see, it didn't go so well. Wall Street Journal this morning authored by Jason Riley. Let's go to Anita. Anita at Magnolia, Arkansas. Hello. Hi, good morning, Pedro. I am old enough to remember when Dr. King was killed. I'm white. But I know black people here in my hometown who are my age who actually cried over that. The same as we did when John Kennedy was assassinated. And I do wish that the media would pay some attention to the John Kennedy assassination. We've heard absolutely almost nothing about that latest report that came out a few months ago. And at age 15, I thought that I would never, never know who killed John Kennedy. Well, we're focused That's on Martin comment. Luther. We're f uh, focused on Martin Luther King today. What do you think his legacy was? I think his legacy was that people need to try to work together and to get along. And I will tell you, here in Magnolia, the black people are more prejudiced against whites than we are against them. Let's go to Huntsville, Alabama. Fred is next. Fred, uh, good morning. You're on. Good morning. Um, I'd like to say something something very, very short and very special. The king was one of a kind. No one will ever replace him, ever. He was a heck of a man, and may he rest in peace. Thank you. Have a nice day. Uh, Trenton, New Jersey. Uh, we've divided the lines differently. Uh, those of you over 50, those of you between 50, uh, 30 and 50, those of you under 30. So uh, pick one of those lines. And if you have not called in the last 30 days, uh, give us a call. Uh, Patrick is in Trenton in that category between 30 and 50. Uh, Patrick, go ahead. Pedro, morning. Good morning. On this very special day, uh, King's legacy uh, I don't know what town you you grew up in, but I I live in Trenton, New Jersey. Uh, the blacks burned the town down after he was killed. So this idea of that King was a man of peace and uh, gentle and wanting uh, just to do things the peaceful way, uh, our town got burned down. Uh, what you do is when you raise one group up, the blacks, so-called civil rights, you're taking privileges away from another group. So, and that was a great article you read, Pedro, by uh, the Wall Street Journal there. That was, that was uh, I pretty much agree with that. And today's real meaning in this day, you have to look at it, it's James Earl Ray, the lone wolf assassin. He had a dream, and James Earl Ray's dream came true. We'll go to Robert, Florence, Kentucky, uh, in the ages of 30 and 50. Yeah, I just wanted to... Uh comment on some of the facts about Martin Luther King that aren't going to be shared by the news media today or as long as the people who control the news media have control of it. The fact that uh, the fact that, that he's a doctor, known as a doctor, his doctorate was actually plagiarized. Uh, the work that he was actually recognized by the Boston University as being plagiarized. They said there was no point in taking his doctorate away, but he actually is known as a plagiarist for also stealing the I have a dream speech from another black pastor. He also known as a communist agitator. That's his legacy, seen as in the front of the Highlander Folk School, which was a well-known communist front, and also being a philanderer. Uh, there's a reason why the FBI, or the, I'm sorry, a judge, uh, a pro-King judge, sealed the FBI's files on Dr. King, for, or should I say Michael King, which is actually his real name. He has actually didn't have his real name even uh, legally changed. Uh, the fact that he was uh, bugged uh, in that hotel the night before, there's a reason why the uh, the judge sealed the uh, the files, because he was beating up on prostitutes, which he routinely saw. This was known. Okay, uh, we'll leave it there. Sylvia, Fort Worth, Texas, go ahead. That is amazing. So listen, man, this is out there, you know, this is out there in the country, and this is one of those issues where in the mainstream, people know, like, okay, come on, we can't. Like, what are we going to do? We're going to come out against a hero like Dr. Martin Luther King? Oh, please. 
So what happens in mainstream discourse, and you see a lot of elected Republicans trying to do this, they try to co-opt his legacy, and they try to, no, 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 he was awesome, everybody agrees to that, but, you know, he's with us. He was actually a Republican every step of the way, and if he was around today, I mean, he would definitely be a Trump supporter, let me tell you. So that's what the mainstream discourse is. But understand, guys, there, there's some non-mainstream discourse on Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. happening all across the country. And this, this is what some people are talking about on the anniversary of his assassination. Isn't that incredible? So, one of them said, oh, he plagiarized stuff. Uh, by the way, as if that undermines anything. I have no idea if that's true. Of course, I'm hesitant to believe some douchebag caller into C-SPAN. But let's assume for a second that is true. I don't care. Oh, he plagiarized some stuff. Therefore, that overwhelming message of uh, equality under the law, the fight to end segregation and overt discrimination against black people, um, the fight for the poor people's campaign, the fight for a living wage and economic rights, the fight to end the wars. He was huge in fighting against Vietnam, the fight for equality in healthcare. Therefore, uh, all that stuff, yeah, I mean, what, we're gonna take the rest of his message seriously? Did you not hear me? He's a plagiarizer. Mm. I mean, that's like fucking saying, you know, um, I don't care that this guy cured cancer. He jaywalked. As if we're supposed to go, oh! He jaywalked! Well, obviously, the rest of his uh, message and everything else he did is totally undermined by that fact. It's not! It's not, but that's the goal, guys. That's what you need to understand. These people, that's the, the whole point is, I'm gonna, I wanna try to get you to believe, by smearing him, I'm gonna try to get you to believe that, well, you know, his message was wrong for reasons X, Y, and Z, because look at his personal character, and since his personal character was fucked up, well, clearly you can't, uh, you can't take anything seriously in his message. And he even brought up, he's a philanderer. He was a philanderer. Okay, so let me get this straight. The message from this idiot is that if you're a philanderer, you know, you can't take that person seriously in any way, shape, or form. So I wonder what this person would say about President Trump. That guy's a philandering motherfucker. Now, my guess is he would say, well, that don't matter if President Trump, President Trump, you know, you... He's a serious guy, and you do, just because he's a philander doesn't mean you don't take the rest of what he's saying at, it, at face value, man. He's trying to make America great again, man. See, that'd probably be the argument on that front, but when it comes to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the idea is he's a philanderer. Therefore, his entire message, disregard it, put it aside. You know, it's not, uh, we shouldn't be looking at it, and he was wrong. And then they really let it slip when... That guy goes, well, he was a communist agitator, too. What the fuck does that mean? To people like this, anybody who's even moderately left-wing is a communist agitator. And by the way, that was the old trick. They tried to say that about anybody who was fighting for uh, racial equality under the law. Anybody who was fighting to try to end segregation. All they do, that's all they have to do. That passed as an argument back in the day on the right. You say, communist. What do you mean communist? He's just fighting for equal protection under the law. He doesn't want to overtly discriminate and, and segregate against other races. Commie! Communist agitator. That's what, what fucking agitator. Who says that? You're an agitator. What fucking kind of snowflake safe space bullshit is that? You're commie agitator. But that's all they had to do. When you don't have an actual argument, you smear. And that's what that, that's a smear. Like, commie agitators. It's, it's just, so, it's a wet blanket you throw over somebody and say, that's it. That's the whole, my whole argument is there and I win. I just called you a commie agitator. And again, he said it repeatedly. He believes in democratic socialism. You know, so you can't call him a communist when he says he believes in democratic socialism. Those are two very, very, very different things. But again, to these guys, anything that's even moderately left wing is viewed as a communist agitator. And think about it. When all you're asking for is to end segregation, <laughs> how can they go, ah, oh, commie? Well, if that's what you're defining as commie, uh, communism, then sign us all up. Because goddamn, that's the that's the common sense position right there of equal protection under the law. And then finally, I think you get this ideology uh, in its purest form 
from one of those people. Um, the first caller said, or it was either the first or the second, he said, listen, the problem is you're taking away, if you give rights to another group, you're taking away privileges from the other group. So that's a very honest and transparent way of describing what was going on in the South. Because it's true. When you ask for the, the rights, rights of black people, the response oftentimes, it was exactly that. Well, but if you give rights to black people, well, then you're taking away the, the privilege of white people to, for example, eat at a diner and sit at the counter and not have to see a black face a few seats down from them. And oftentimes, this is the mentality. The mentality is, um, I actually have a right to take away your rights. So, you think you have basic human rights. You don't. I have a right to take away your rights. And I will define that as my rights. So it's my rights. It's my right to keep you on that other side of town by force and make you live in a police state and bash your head in if you don't do what I want you to do and if you don't go sip at the colored water fountain instead of the white water fountain. So that was the mentality, man. And, you know... It was gross. <laughs> it's gross and it's fundamentally illogical, but it stems from one basic belief, which is they are not the same as us. They're not human beings. They don't count as human beings. They're subhuman. They're inferior. They're inferior genetically. They're inferior culturally. And we're the superior race. And so we're going to enforce that on them. It doesn't matter how violent we are in the process. So don't look at my inferior actions, because if you take offensive violence against somebody, that's a primitive inferior action. But don't look at my inferior actions. My inferior actions are by definition superior because everything I do is superior because these people are just subhuman. They're not even really people. But you see that ideology really leaking through in a lot of those comments from those people. And, you know, I'm, I'm covering this story so that you guys know it's still out there. Like I said, in, in polite society discourse, like the Republicans in Washington, uh, they'll try to, they try to co-opt MLK's legacy and say, we all agree MLK's great, but he's really more with us than he is with the Democrats, the modern day Democrats, the modern day left wingers. So they try to steal the legacy because they know they can't beat it. But no, there are some people in this country who aren't even, they're not, haven't even graduated to the point where they try to use that clever trick. They're still stuck at the, no, he's a commie agitator, he's a philanderer, he's a plagiarizer, he's a bad guy, and, it, you know, he's an uppity Negro, basically, and it, we shouldn't be giving him credit. You shouldn't even try to co-opt his legacy. His legacy was bad. We're against MLK. That's the mentality you just heard right there.